the show on Bastille Day in the Tour de France. And on a quieter day for the leaders, Greg LeMond was untroubled in the leaders' yellow jersey. Hello again and welcome to the Tour de France. We're in the heart of Brittany all day today, starting from here in Rennes, where the clouds are grey and rain is threatening, and going through to Camper. Now, news reaching us this morning that some members of the PDM team have contracted a fever literally overnight. Nico Verhoeven is not starting. Well, let's hope that their three top men, Eric Broikink, Sean Kelly and Raoul Alcala, are OK. This is the overall situation this morning. Greg LeMond in the leader's yellow jersey, 1 minute 13 seconds back is Eric Broikink. Jamaldine abdou Japarov from the Soviet Union is third. Miguel Indurain, Jean-Francois Bernard. Of the other riders pushing for the top, Sean Kelly is in sixth place, Yanni Bunyo seventh. Pedro Delgado, the Spaniard, is in twelfth. Laurent Fignon, fourteenth. And Claudio Chiapucci, who was second last year, is slipping down a little bit at the moment. Well, before we join the action today, what about the action yesterday and the result of our quiz? Nobody, and I'm not surprised, picked the winner, Mauro Ribeiro. But a lot of you did go for Laurent Jalabert, the French sprinter who was second. Out of the hat, the name, Sandy Hobbs from Glasgow. Many congratulations. The yellow jersey, signed by Greg LeMond and Ribeiro, will be on its way to you as soon as the Tour de France finishes. Later on in the programme, will be a fly on the wall in the Motorola team camp as they talk tactics. But let's have a look at the day's route. This is it, 207 kilometres, three bonus sprints on the way, and it could be a day again for Jumonidin Abdu Japarov. And the rollout this morning from Rennes for the crossing of Brittany, assured of big crowds. But one rider in addition to Nico Verhoeven not starting, although he signed on, is Uwe Raab. That means the PDM are leaving this morning. Left two riders with this mysterious illness. Now, the Motorola team, without a win so far, allowed our cameras into their team meeting this morning, and here's manager Jim Okovic giving out the day's orders. I want to, I really want to save Dog and Phil for later in the race. You know, we kind of got to start to take a little, little chance here, because I think that Zed and Benesto, for the most part, aren't going to let a break get too much time at the start. You know, they may spend the first half of the race keeping things, you know, together, and then in the last 50, 60 kilometers, yeah, if a break goes, they're not going to be so concerned about it, because it's, you know, they'll, They'll make sure it doesn't get more than a minute or two at the end, but they're less likely to chase then and let some other teams chase that have sprinters, you know, or that want to keep the race together, like Panasonic. They took over at the end of the race yesterday, so I think that the same thing will happen today, where at the start, Zed and, uh, and Benesta will take a little bit more control, and, um, and at the end of the race, the other teams will, will, will handle it. So what I'd like to do is I want Phil and Dog you guys just to st stay back, stay in good position. Obviously, if something's, you know, going down the road real heavy, you might have to consider being in there. But I want you to conserve as much as you can until we get over that fourth category climb. And then you guys got to start to be active, okay? And in the meantime, Andy, you just do your own race the way you did yesterday. You know, you see an opportunity, you should go for it. You know, and stay up front, stay out of trouble, stay with the big guys and watch what's going on, but make your own opportunities if you see them out there. Well, we watch out for Dag Otto Larsson and Phil Anderson and maybe Andy Hampson as today's stage comes to an end. This is the result of the first sprint, Johan Museo winning the 57.5 kilometer sprint and Yalabur was second and Abdu Jafarov third taking a two second bonus. That puts him now equal second in the Tour de France. Bad news for PDM, it continues today. Martin Early, Jean-Paul Van Poppel, already a stage winner, are both reported now in trouble at the back of the race. At the second sprint at 100.5 kilometers, Chidi Laurent was in the lead on his own. Then heading home the field was Abdu Japarov ahead of Josam Museo, and that means Abdu Japarov now clearly second in the Tour de France. But the troubles for PDM are getting worse. Martin Early and Falk Bowden are behind the race now. Jean-Paul Van Poppel has abandoned. They've now lost three riders today. And Eric Broiking is reported to have contracted the fever as well. 
but for the time being at least is still riding along in the peloton. Well, let's join the action now. The riders are still in the region of 45 kilometers from the finishing line. They're coming up towards the last sprint of the day at Goran. It comes at 163 and a half kilometers. We're just coming to the end of what has been a long chase for the peloton, 64 kilometers of chasing, in fact, because Thierry Laurent, who won that second sprint, has just been picked up. He went clear at 83 kilometers, and he was caught at 147. So it looks now, Paul, as though the sprinters will try and clean up in this third and final sprint of the day. Well, they will try and do that, but the sprint, the sprint may well not be a sprint at all because there are lots of attacks going all the time here. This looks like Venstra from the Buckler team. There are a couple of riders away. One rider who just pulled clear was Soren Lilholt. He's being chased by two other rides, riders, Anselmo Fuerte and Michel Vermont. They're just in front of the main field here as the attacks are really coming thick and fast today. Well, while we look at these pictures, Paul, what do you think has uh, hit the PDM team? Because there was no warning of this at all, and the team absolutely um, in big trouble now. Well, the team really is decimated. I can only think that one, one possible explanation is there must be something that they ate for it to hit all the riders so quickly. If it was some kind of a flu or a, uh, a cold virus, it, may, it would have hit them at a more of a staggered basis. But every one of them to go down today like this, I'm sure it must have been something in the food. The riders then continuing their way across Brittany. The crowds today, although they don't appear here to be too big, are absolutely enormous along the road today. And there is a superb crowd waiting for the riders in what should be a superb finish ball. At last we've got a great finish, long, straight, clean road. No problems on the way in at all. This is Lilholt still at the front here. The other two riders have been brought back into the fold, but you can see the whole field behind him trying to pull him back. And here in Brittany these last couple of days. Great to see so many British spectators out here. And glad to know how much you're enjoying the coverage when you go home on the Tour de France. Ariostia, Onse and Lotto, the three teams here. Panasonic, who've done a lot of work today, Paul, to keep this race together. They were the main team to chase down Thierry Laurent for the well, best part of 60 kilometres. Well, they're still chasing that elusive stage victory. They want Olaf Ludwig to try and win a stage, but the, all the work they did, they, know, they can no longer keep the race together. They use a lot of work, a lot of energy trying to bring back that group, that uh, lone breakaway of Thierry Laurent when he had four minutes. They were the only team that contributed to that chase. And now I think they're having to pay for it. Well, while we watch these pictures, uh, we've had a lot of phone calls from you talking about riders' diets. So, Paul, can you tell us a little bit about what riders eat and how soon before the race? Well, most riders, the, the, the diet has changed a great deal recently. In fact, most riders have gone away from the traditional steak and rice that they used to eat a very, uh, very few years ago. Now it's a lot more uh, spaghetti, omelets, lighter type food, and probably a lot of cereals, yogurts and uh, dried fruits. So they usually go for that about three hours before the race starts so that they can be digested. And some riders like Phil Anderson, for instance, once they get into the race situation, they don't actually eat any more solid food. They just take on uh, glucose drinks. And uh, if, you can if you can survive that kind of a diet, well, then it works very well because the food and the energy go straight into the system. Right, well, you see my pause and explain the diet. Of riders in the tour, the four names of the leaders coming up. Maurizio Fondrius, Milcho Mauri, Liali, uh, Lely rather, and Sammy Morels. They're the four leaders, and a very strong combination it is too. This is a class breakaway, believe me. Lely third in the Tour of Italy. The man we're looking at here now, Mori, winner of the Tour of Spain. Sammy Morels, winner of the Grand Prix of Frankfurt, I think it was this year. And the other rider in the breakaway is Fondrius, former world champion. That's a good move. And this is the chase group coming up, and it looks like it might be Bon Tempe joining them. Well, there's an, another sprinter who can't uh, sprint very well these days, and that's uh, Guido Bon Tempe. He was unable to get up there very much yesterday, and uh, this this group is going away. And Bauer is the man that uh, Okovic has been wanting to do a good ride recently, and Bauer has slipped into a little move here that is chasing those initial four riders. So Steve Bauer joins the back. The team talk that we were privileged to witness this morning, and. Uh, 
It looks as though Bauer is looking for the stage win today. We're rather lucky to get our cameras inside the room today, you know, with the Motorola team, because they don't like to talk in front of cameras about what they plan to do, especially if it doesn't work out or they actually make a big mistake. And if it does work out, well, of course, they'll feel very happy tonight. Well, Bauer is looking for the victory. He's come across to this leading group. It's establishing quite nicely at the front, and we've got some very strong riders here. Notably, none of the big leaders, though. Stand by for the sprint. We're into entering a Gouran now. And that is Bontempi in third place. And I think it's Lely. What a rider he's turning out to be this year. Best rookie of the Tour de France this year. Bontempi at the front. Interestingly enough, Abdu Japarov is not here, but he might be shortly because that bunch is not very far behind. The Tashkent Tornado, but he's too late as they come through. So the bonuses go to the lesser men, Bontempi, I think it was, who led them through the line there. There's Rudy Dons at the front, Abdul Japarov having one of those rare breaks from the spin, but he knew that nobody in that front group was going to damage his position overall at all. He's now purely and simply second in the race and closing in with these time bonuses on Greg Lamont. So the race is still very much on that breakaway far from gone so we'll take a short break and welcome back we're heading towards Kimper a high rate of knots now there's the 10 kilometer banner this is the chasing group of four riders have escaped and these four riders are Nico Evans Phil Anderson Brian Holm and Michel Dernice now, this morning, our cameras were in the bedrooms of the Motorola team for the team tactic tour from Jim Okovic. And this is what he said about the closing kilometers. Uh, and if at the end, you know, do, you know, we're all together, you guys got to help Phil to try to get away at the end. You know, we're not going to win a field sprint here. But we can at least, if we can get Phil in a little group, you know, I think he's got the best legs and the most consistent legs right now. So we got to take some chances with him. And, you know, Phil, you've got to talk to the guys a little bit. And if you need them, you know, you've got you to tell them you need them, you know, and get them up front. You guys got to go up front with them. You know, at the end of the race, it's not like he can do it himself. You know, he needs a couple of wheels to ride off of. And he needs, he needs you know, maybe to get them a little bit off the front, leave some gaps, you know, that kind of stuff. You've got to play with a little bit. I think there's a good chance that he can go in the, in the, in the last, you know, kilometers of the bike race. But he can't do it alone. He definitely needs two, three, even four guys up there to help. Well, it could be that Jim's tactics will work out today. Phil Anderson is in this leading group. He went a little bit earlier than I think Jim would have liked. In fact, he went at around 25 kilometers from the finish. The gap has been up to a minute and 32, and I think Paul is now inside a minute. Well, it's just come down. The last time check I got there was 51 seconds, and this is the reason why we've got the Buckler team riding at the front and the Lotto team. They want to bring it together for a bunch sprint. Johan Museo chasing that bunch sprint after the little aggravation he had with Abdi Zaparov a few days earlier, and also the Buckler team would like to bring it together for Van der Aden or for Jelle Neidem to try and uh, take the sprint. Well, as we watch the leaders here and the clouds threatening rain once more, but it hasn't come down today yet. These are the sad pictures of the PDM team today. This is Martin Early. He's just abandoned the Tour de France. He's joined his teammate Jean-Paul Van Poppel in the broom wagon today. And they also have lost Nico Verhoeven and Uwe Rapp, who failed to start. And the mystery illness has certainly taken its toll. Well, look at this, Paul. This breakaway is still tapping through. The, the, what do you think about Phil Anders? I mean, he's got three riders here who could possibly beat him in the sprint. Well, the thing is, it's better to be in a group of three riders with a group of four riders going for the sprint than being in a big, massive sprint for the line. But it looks as if this might just be over for the riders because the gap is coming down rapidly now. The time gap on these riders is now 30 seconds. So it depends on whether they can get just into the streets of Campera and maybe stay clear. But look how long this peloton is at the moment. You can just see how fast they're going in pursuit of the four rake breakaways. A lot of boys giving everything because they really want to get those breakaways uh, back into the fold. Time's coming down all the time. That last check we had of 45 seconds has come down again to 36, as you can see there. And everybody at the front here again, the Lotto boys with the Buckler boys in there trying to 
bring everybody back together. Here are the escapers around the big roundabout on the outskirts of Camp Air now. Dennis, uh, every time our cameras go back, he's at the back, but no, he's going through. I think that's just a look at the draw. Uh, the, all four riders reporting they're working well together. The best placed rider in this escape is Nico Emmons, 30 second overall, 7 minutes 35 seconds behind Greg Lamont. And then comes Brian Holm, he's lying 57th in the tour, Phil Anderson 66, and Michel Derny's 83rd. Well, these riders of the Bain Field now just coming around the, the uh, roundabout that the breakaway went around just recently there, and you can see every time they come to one of these roundabouts, there's a big split. The, met, the front riders now going under the five kilometres to go banner. They'll probably be seen now by the chasing bunch now as they come into the streets of Camper towards that fantastic bunch sprint, which I think we're going to have now with a straight line all the way down the side of the river. Well, three times the Tour de France has started from Camp Air, but we've never had a stage finish here, and we're seeing the biggest crowd I've seen as a stage finish this year in the Tour de France, and you'll see them too very shortly over the last two kilometres. They must be 15 deep. There's the main field, under five kilometres to go, and the Lotto boys are driving the train from Museo. Museo will be resting about four or five men back, hoping to see daylight and the sprint finish for him. He knows maybe the finish here would suit him down to the ground 28 seconds now and you won't hold them back now Paul well they may not all they need now is for one or two of the riders from Lotto to start to suffer a little bit and then stop to chase you can see there's no organized chase by the Lotto riders there there's a Lotto rider on the front that looks like Jan Navens there's another one three or four back but I think the natural acceleration of the bunch as we come in towards the finish will pull these riders back into the fold but it's not over yet a race isn't won until you've crossed the line and we never can tell that's Benjamin van Itebeek, the Belgian champion, sitting on the inside. As they start to go down, which is quite a steep hill, this. And one of the Lotto boys pushed his teammate out in front there to do some more work. And that was Jan Navens uh, getting the benefit of the push. Not allowed, of course, but if the referees don't see, I guess you can't do much about it. And here's the outskirts of Camp Air now. And now you're beginning to see the crowds that are witnessing the arrival of the tour. It's not, in fact, been here at all since 1965, which I find absolutely amazing because Brittany is the mecca of French cycling and they really love their cycle racing here. You must have spent quite a lot of time here, Paul, as a cyclist yourself. Well, this is one of the hearts of cycling. There are two major cycling areas in France, the North and Brittany. A lot of the best cyclists in the world have come from Brittany and that's where the capital is, I think, of cycling in France at the moment. The gap obviously coming down the same roundabout we saw the breakaway before must be around about 15 to 20 seconds I didn't get a proper time check then but it's going to be very close well that's a lovely pick you think they were in a cycling stadium there for a moment wouldn't you here they are though spreading their way into the city streets of Cap Air Ronan Pentec who rides the Tour de France lives in this region too Bernardini of course comes not too far away and he's now the technical advisor of the Tour de France a former five-time winner Phil Anderson now he must have mixed thoughts, and he's going for it. Oh, no, I thought he was moving ahead there, Paul, because I, I really expect Phil will try a loner. Well, Phil is trying to surprise him, I think, but he's probably, the, way, the form he's got at the moment, he can probably take each one of these riders in the sprint, because I think they've all worked very hard to stay away. If they stay away, it's a pity we can't just look back down the road there. The gap must still be reasonable, because the red Tour de France car is still in there, and as soon as we see that Tour de France car move out of the way, then we'll know that the bunch is very close behind them. For the moment, it must still be around the 20-second mark, so it's still workable. But Anderson, surprisingly, has not won a stage in the Tour de France since 1982. In 1983, he wore the leader's yellow jersey. Look at this, two kilometres to go, and this could be a finish. Now, we've had two superb finishes this uh, last week in the Tour de France. Etienne de Wilde, when he won at Dijon, he just scraped in ahead of the field, he hung on. And then we had another great finish uh, yesterday when Ribeiro literally hung on by the skin of his pants ahead of Jalabert and Konishev. And now can they do it again? Because the peloton are under the two kilometres to go banner and these four riders out in front for the last 25 kilometres trying now to take the stage in Camper. It's going to be so close on the line. It might all come together in the last 500 metres. You can see the chase is not quite as organised now. The Carrera ride is coming up to start leading the sprint out for Abdi Zaparov. Johan Museo is in there. A little bit further back also, Eric van der Aden. These are the front riders. 
They wait. There's Anderson at the back. They're waiting for his opportunity to try and surprise them. Now's the time when they can't start to play around because the bunch is just so close. This is Brian Home at the front there. Well, somebody's accelerated right on the front. And the attack has gone. I think it's Nico Evans who's gone. And now Anderson, I would have thought, was playing that one. They've opened the sprint very, very early. It's still a long way to go. And the reason being is because they can't afford to delay it under the one kilometre kite. Anderson has the perfect launching pad here. He's tucked nicely in the back. And Jim Okovic won't believe this. Uh, all the things he told the team to do, they've read it to the letter. And if Anderson won the stage, it will have worked out absolutely brilliantly for him today. And our cameras privileged to be in at that meeting. Anderson waiting for the last possible minute. He's checking the punch position. Anderson making the, making sure where the field is. It's very dangerous because every time he looks round like this, a rider might move in front of him. And I've seen Anderson fall off a few times like this. Derny's obviously worried because he knows he can't win the sprint. He's tried to jump away. He's going to try another little attack here. Let's be careful for Anderson. He's got to react to Derny. He's going down the left-hand side. Straight away, we've got uh, Nico Edmonds reacting. Anderson in an ideal position as we come up to the last 500 metres. Well, Anderson ready right there, and he's has gone too early. And now Anderson's put himself behind Brian Holm in the perfect position for the spins. And can the, we don't know where the peloton is, but it must be on a yard behind this group. The camera's in the wrong position. Now we'll know, as Anderson's on the left of our picture and going for it now. Oh, and he comes to Holm a little bit. He might get penalised for that. And it's Evans taking on the bar. Anderson's gone clear now. Phil Anderson is going to bring to an end the Motorola's day. They said it all in the meeting, and Anderson wins on the line. Two hands in the air. Anderson, Amon, Holm, and Dernie's on the line. And after Japanov rounds off the day in camp uh, with a split finish ahead of Ludwig and Musail. Well, they didn't look as though they were going to survive, but they did. And Phil Anderson takes his first stage win since 1982. So it's been a long time in coming, this stage win for Phil Anderson. A wait of 10 years, but here's the result tonight. Phil Anderson leading home that group of four, and Nico Amons in second place, Brian Holm and Michel Dernis. The main field again being led in by the top sprinter, Shimolodin Abdu Japarov. Well, it was a day of joy for Phil Anderson, and immediately after the finish, Paul Sherwin, a good friend of his, was with him. Phil, those just went to Okovic's plans from this morning. The team talk said that you were the man to go for the stage. You must be quite pleased. Yeah, sometimes it works out like that, you know, for every ten times uh, it doesn't, one time it works, well, it's worth it, because uh, really a victory like this is uh, fantastic, you know. It's uh, one of the biggest victories in my career, so it's great to win a stage like that. And the happy, smiling face of Phil Anderson, that contrasts now with the very sad faces of the PDM riders, because they've been struck by this mysterious illness, and today they've lost five riders from their team. They were leading this race in the team awards as well. At the finish today, the arrival of Falk Bowden, the fifth member of the team, he actually struggled to the finish and was applauded by the crowd, but I'm afraid he's been eliminated for being outside of the time for the day. He's also extremely ill as well. And the sad faces tonight of the remainder of the team still in the race, the camp of PDM, and they're saying now that every one of the riders has this sickness, including, by the way, the team manager, Jan Gispers. Well, this is the overall situation at the moment. It might all change by the morning. In the lead is Greg LeMond. In second place today, after a fine session of sprinting, Abdu Japarov claiming a few seconds necessary. He pushes Eric Broiking back into third place. Sean Kelly is sixth. But there's a rumour going around tonight that the PDM team may have to withdraw from the race. We won't know that, of course, until tomorrow's stage, which starts here in Camper and goes 246 kilometres down to saint Blaine. It's a long way, and the PDM team are looking rather sad. From Paul, Gary, and myself from the Tour de France, goodbye. <laughs>